Today we're talking about population growth strategies, and we're going to be looking at a lot of graphs while we do this. So these are the two most common that we'll see, exponential growth and logistic growth. When we're talking about population growth, we need to understand a couple of different factors. Biotic potential, carrying capacity, and environmental resistance. Biotic potential is a population's maximum growth rate. Uh, in an exponential growth pattern, an organism always grows at its biotic potential, whereas in a logistical growth pattern, they can grow at biotic potential for a time, but eventually it'll actually slow down. And it slows down due to the result of environmental resistance. Environmental resistance are the factors that prevent a population from growing larger. It could be lack of food, it could be population density leading to disease rises, uh, it could be space, could be difficulty finding a mate. It could be many different things, but all of them prevent a population from growing. Carrying capacity is then the maximum number of organisms a population can support in a given environment as determined by the amount of environmental resistance. And finally, we have the concept of equilibrium. And equilibrium is the point where population size has matched the carrying capacity, where biotic potential and environmental resistance are equal to each other, and they're counteracting one another. So population growth has stopped or slowly oscillates above and below carrying capacity. So the two strategies we use match up with the two graphs we saw earlier. An R-selected species will grow exponentially, and they're called R-selected because R stands for rate, as in growth rate. The strategy they have selected maximizes growth rate, so they constantly grow, which leads to uh, exponential growth. It's always increasing. K-selected species, on the other hand, grow logistically. It's K-selected because what they're doing is this is a strategy that can even out over time. It's a little bit slower, but what it, that allows the organisms to do is it allows them to match with carrying capacity. It gives more time for environmental resistances to kick in and slow down population growth without slaughtering the entire population. And just a note when we look at these curves, like we see with the curves on the right, uh, population growth can be a bit stochastic, which means it fluctuates up and down, especially in populations that reproduce seasonally each year. So uh, oftentimes what we do is we smooth out these curves. We either draw a best fit line through all of the stochastic uh, changes or we take the maximum population sizes and instead of showing all the little fluctuations from year to year we actually show them right after breeding season like we see on the far right so that we can get a better sense of what the curve actually looks like as opposed to looking at the seasonal variations that are always going to occur. So. The growth itself might actually not be perfectly smooth, but averaging it out often makes things easier. So our J curve is the cur graph that we get from exponential growth. It's called J curve because it looks like a J. Sometimes we also call it a hockey stick curve because some of them, especially the human population growth curve, looks like a hockey stick. So a uh, J-curve is the result of R selection, a uh, species whose reproductive strategy revolves around maximizing growth rate. And this type of exponential growth can only occur continuously if there's unlimited factors, both biotic and abiotic. So unlimited food, unlimited space, unlimited mates, freedom from disease. You can see quite quickly that in nature, this is not possible. So uh, that's actually one of ecologists' biggest concerns. Uh, we talk in ecology a lot about saving the environment, but part of that saving the environment is saving our own species. And right now, human population is growing exponentially. 
And we know that it can't last. There is not unlimited resources on the planet. So the big question is, are we going to level out and turn back into logistic growth with a carrying capacity that we're going to hit eventually? Or are we going to hit what every other exponentially growing species on the planet does, which is where we go into a boom-bust cycle, uh, often quite dramatically. But we will talk about boom-busts later on. We can also have an S-curve. An S-curve is based around logistic growth. And this is growth rate that is being limited by environmental resistance. Uh, oftentimes, this is a lot slower, not just in terms of it's not maximized for constant growth, but literally the time between generations takes longer. Um, and this would be what humans normally fall under, except our advances in technology have... Uh, removed some of the usual limitations that would be upon us. So logistic growth means that uh, given enough time, environmental resistances can slow down population growth, and that allows it to just gently come up to match carrying capacity. And often this means that it goes through what looks like a tiny boom-bust cycle that causes it to go above and below carrying capacity little by little. And you'll see other graphs as we talk through this that show that. However, it's important to note this isn't really a boom-bust cycle because even though the population's going up and down, busting really means that you've been driven way down carrying below carrying capacity. The population's been severely damaged. And this logistic growth pattern is the most common growth strategy in nature. And that kind of makes sense actually because populations are much, uh, they survive much more easily if they can level out and stabilize around carrying capacity instead of constantly going through the boom-bust cycle that every time you bust runs the risk of wiping out the population or even the species. Uh, Any time that a population is growing exponentially, so mostly for our selected populations, but also when uh, K-selected populations are growing at biotic potential and are well below carrying capacity, we can actually mathematically calculate how long it will take for a population to double in size. And the way we do that is we use the per capita growth rate. The doubling time will be equal to 69 hundredths of, divided by the per capita growth rate, and we actually call this the rule of 69s. Uh, this is mathematically based. Sometimes you'll also see the rule of 70 or the rule of 72, and we often do use that in economics, but we typically stick to the rule of 69s in uh, biology, and it's just slightly different mathematical models. So they work under slightly different conditions and have different assumptions, and this is the one that works for ecology pretty well. Uh, the time units for this depend on how you measured your per capita growth rate. Most of the time, ecologists will measure per capita growth rate over the course of a year. So with the annual per capita growth rate, it'll tell you how many years it's going to take for the population to double. And just to reinforce again, this only works for populations growing at biotic potential. So when populations are unlimited, by environmental resistance. Also, sometimes you'll see this as uh, 69 divided by the per capita growth rate. That is when you're expressing per capita growth rate as a percentage. So it's going to be 100 times larger to compensate for the fact that percentage is going to be 100 times larger than the uh, <clears throat> uh, growth probability that we usually use. <clears throat> 